Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Digital Black Magic channel. Today I'm going to disassemble a really old laptop manufactured by Fujitsu Siemens that has a failed hard drive. It would be possible to swap the hard drive, but you would end up with a system that has no chance in running current software. So yes, we can make it work again, but there is no point because the current software doesn't work on this machine. So I take the chance to disassemble the machine and show you all the components which are in there. In order to disassemble a laptop or a computer, you need the screwdriver set with all necessary bits in it. I have one of these as well as a magnetic bowl to keep all the screws safely and keep them from running away. A runaway screw is not a nice thing. The laptop itself is a 14-year-old Fujitsu Siemens Almina M1420. I'm going to perform a partial teardown. You can find a next to infinite number of screws when you flip the laptop over. But the most important components are located underneath some covers. I'm going to remove the lids that cover up the important components and I'm going to explain what these components do. The empty space here is where the battery was. The battery has been removed. Here you can find the old serial number of Windows XP. I'm going to start with this one here. We can see a cooling fan and a copper strip. Most likely Underneath that, we will find the CPU and or the graphics card. The copper strip transfers the heat of the components and brings it to the fan, which is most likely the only fan in the system. Next up is this lid, which covers the hard drive. We will go back to the hard drive later. Behind the other lid, you will find the random access memory or short RAM. The RAM modules sit in a socket similar to a Lego brick sitting on another Lego brick and they are kept in place by brackets. When you release the brackets, the RAM module will flip up just like so, and you can release it. This particular module is manufactured by Samsung and has a capacity of 256 megabytes. The system holds two of these modules. This makes a capacity of 512 megabytes, which is way too low for current systems and was never a big thing, not even for Windows XP. To reseat the module, you just put it in the socket and gently push down on it until it locks in place. This procedure didn't change much for the current systems. The only thing that changed is the socket itself to prevent you from installing the wrong modules. Many laptops today have soldered on memory, so you can't swap that, unfortunately. The hard drive sits in a cage. This cage is locked into place by one screw. You can slide the hard drive sideways and remove it. The hard drive itself is locked into the cage with four screws. Once the screws are removed, the hard drive can be removed from the cage. I will use that particular hard drive in two future videos. One will be how a hard drive works technically and the second will be a follow-up on my first how to delete data video which then shows how to destroy a hard drive. Keep in mind that the data no matter what you do is still on there. So all you do is you increase the effort 
somebody else has to take to get your data. Here you can see a two and a half inch hard drive. It has the old standard of connecting to the PC, which is called IDE or Parallel ATA. In this form factor, the connection also includes the power lines for the disk. There are external USB cages, which you can buy to house these disks, but this would be only appropriate if you want to get the data off of the disk when your laptop just died. Other than that, I can't see any scenario where it would be an additional value to you to reuse these disks. The failed disk is the reason why this laptop is going to be decommissioned. The other factor would be that Windows XP is way out of support and the current version of any operating system wouldn't run on this hardware. Next up will be the dismounting of the cooling solution. As stated before, the fan is connected to the scupper strip. To fully remove it, we will also need to disconnect the electrical wire here. Here we can see the processing unit of the computer. It's a Pentium M, a milestone in Intel's history. It sits in a socket and I just found a screw, which I don't fully understand because it's next to the socket. Removing the screw and accidentally hitting the CPU removes the CPU from the socket. I don't know if it was held by the screw in any way. The CPU sits in the socket just like a Lego brick does and the socket connects the CPU to the rest of the computer. In this case, the socket has a bunch of holes in it. The CPU could have been soldered on. That is why I did not force it off. The CPU has the exact number of pins to fit in that particular socket on the one side and on the other side it has the CPU itself, the so-called die. This CPU doesn't have any protecting layer over its die. That means by putting the cooler on it the wrong way, you could accidentally destroy the CPU. This type of CPU is not meant for private people to assemble and mock around with. In the early 2000s, AMD released CPUs just like that for the desktop market and the end users. The result was that some of the CPUs got destroyed when assembling the new machine, which led to frustration. That is why desktop CPUs come with a heat spreader. It's technically necessary today, but on top of it, it protects the CPU itself from the clumsiness of the users. All vital components of the computer have been disassembled now. The hard disk was here. The CPU was sitting here. And the RAM was sitting here. In case I wanted to maintain the machine, to open these three lids would have done the job. There is no point in disassembling any other screws. I just missed out on this one. This lid contains another component of the computer. It contains the wireless adapter. The wireless adapter is sitting in a socket similar to the RAM modules, but bigger. It says Intel Wireless on this uh, add-in card and it has wired connections, which of course are the receiving antennas. I will put the card just next to the other components we just removed from the computer. Next to the CPU socket, there is another heatsink which can be removed. Underneath that heatsink, there are chips which are soldered on to the mainboard. As a result, you can't remove them. The DVD drive is sitting in a slot and is kept in place by a single screw. After the screw has been removed, the drive just slides out. The old laptop has been disassembled. 
unfortunately, the future of this laptop is the Recycle Center. When you look at the other videos I did on the Dell desktop and the Samsung laptop or the Asus for this matter, I try to reuse and expand the lifespan of hardware. But in this case, it's just not worth it. This is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope to see you again soon and I'm looking forward to my next video. Have a nice day.